Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Eric Page, uh, NZ2G, that's November Zulu, to golf. He has a kind of a whimsical question. Um, at first I looked at it and went, oh, that's interesting. But then I looked at it again and said, why, why don't we model this and, and see what comes out of it? Okay, his uh, question goes this way. Hello, Dave. Why is it always an inverted V? Is it out of convenience? I understand you would need only one point, one tall point in an inverted V, like a mast at the center point. But if you had two points, is there any advantage to a V? The height of the transformer might stand out as the biggest difference, and the wire direction would be the other. Does takeoff angle come into play? I haven't seen any videos of V versus inverted V with signal report, SWR, etc. Just curious. Uh, let me just take a quick peek at a little of what he's talking about. Uh, if you have two points, the best thing to hang would be a dipole. Even if you had to hang the ends down a little bit, you'd be in best shape. Um, and I'm not sure what he means by transformer. I think a ballon. Uh, you could put a ballon at the middle of this since you're balancing. You're taking unbalanced coax and connecting it to a balanced antenna. Um, the differences, as it turns out, aren't that large. I prepared uh, three sets of charts. One for a standard inverted V. Okay. Uh, second, I flipped uh, the, I held the feed point the same height, but inverted the legs up. And in the last one, I actually moved the V down, so it would be more like a flipped inverted V. And the results are quite interesting. Let's take a look. The starting point for this is a model that comes with EZNEC, uh, which is the so-called backyard inverted V. This is a classic V for 20 meters. Uh, the, the feed point is at 24 feet, okay, and the ends go down to 12 feet. Now, if we look at this low antenna, it uh, tends to radiate straight up, but I want you to notice this is the minus 5 dB, so at the minus 6 dB, which is 1S unit, you are transmitting at a pretty good uh, low angle right there. This is a pretty good radiation pattern because although you're a an S unit down, you still have pretty low uh, takeoff angle, whereas of course the main takeoff angle is pretty much straight up. The SWR looks fine. It's under 2 to 1 across the entire 20 meter band. And uh, here are the wire lengths and the heights. Uh, for not, I'm sorry, not wire lengths. These are not lengths. These are, in fact, the coordinates of the ends of the wire. You have to use trigonometry to figure the actual length. So what I did was I just sort of flopped it up. We're still at 24 feet where the uh, feed point is, but we go up to 36 feet on either end, okay? And if we look at this, now we're now higher. The center of the antenna is higher. So now we get a uh, uh, radiation angle of, here's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 degrees up. But notice that at our uh, minus 1S unit, we're only 10 degrees up. So you could still work uh, DX with this. You lose an S unit uh, in your receive, but it will work, okay? This is how people who have fairly low antennas sometimes still work some uh, pretty interesting uh, DX. Now, we look at this. We're still under 2 to 1 across the band, okay? And here are the wire uh, coordinates here. We kept the uh, end number 1 at 25 feet and put the ends up to 36. Well, you say, why don't we move the whole antenna down? Okay, so here we've moved the tops at 24 feet, 
The bottom is at 12 feet, okay? So this is basically the old antenna would have been here to here to here. So we've just done a flip. And if we look at the, uh, what it does is it moves the resonant point much lower. You have to shorten the wires slightly to get it under two to one across the band. You could do it. You could do it very easily, but I'm just showing the effects. Uh, again, it points straight up, and uh, if you want a, uh, if you put it one S unit down, right here would be about 20 degrees, okay? So you're losing a little by having it at a lower height. And then here is, uh, here are the coordinates uh, for the ends of the antennas. So Eric, there you are. Yes, you can make a V. And I have seen some manufacturers that do sort of fiberglass Vs uh, with a piece of uh, rope across the top to keep it from flopping around too much. Uh, you can do that. Now, as I have noted here, your gains are not that much different from a regular dipole, regardless of where you put it. So the bottom line here is that for dipole type antennas, whether you have them straight or bent or bent up or whatever, you get approximately the same thing. A lot of the variations on a dipole are just that. They work as well as a dipole. Okay, so that looks kind of interesting, doesn't it? We've taken a whimsical question asked by Eric and have uh, taken a look, actual real life models, uh, to take a look at what this does to radiation patterns and things like that. Uh, taking the case where you have low, high, low, and just flipping that will give you about the same performance. Or if you take it and flip it on the feed point so it flips up like this, you get slightly better uh, reaction because in antennas, height matters. The higher it is up to a half wavelength, uh, the uh, lower the takeoff angle. So I hope that it was a fun holiday themed uh, little uh, exploration. I kind of enjoyed doing it. And uh, it answers the question. It just goes to show that with a dipole antenna, the different variations on a dipole, like inverted Vs, tend to perform about the same as a dipole within just a few dBs. If you want to get more radiation out of it, you need to start working with ways to focus that radiation in one direction. And we start to get into beam antennas, cubicle quads, phased arrays, things like that. So there you have it. And so um, in the next several charts, there are ways that you can help support the channel. Don't forget that we do have a monthly uh, giveaway and a weekly live stream. So until we next meet, 73.